What's going on, all you Miami Vice enthusiasts? Your two favorite senseis are back in the dojo tonight. We're talking uh, once again about the HBO Max series uh, that hit the streamer just a couple months ago. It just wrapped up um, a week or two ago, and me and this guy, Uncle Logan over here, are going to talk about uh, you know season one of Tokyo Vice. That's right. If you guys have been paying attention to our YouTube channel, we talked about this uh, first few episodes and then, you know, we wanted to come back and share our thoughts about the first season. It just ended not too long ago, you know, getting around to finally binge this and really fall into the world of Tokyo, the underworld, the crime world, corrupt cops. And then your focal point here being Jake Edelstein, which is played by Ansel Elgort and did a really great job in this is kind of the naive, you know, trying to get his feet wet in the industry, he lands a job at this big uh, news outlet in Tokyo. And that's where, you know, the, the story picks up essentially uh, being on these, you know, stories and trying to get information and finding out about some bad stuff going on in Tokyo. It's a story that uh, both of us got into really easily. Thanks in part to Ansel Elgort's Jake Edelstein. It's an American in a foreign country. And, you know, what makes this role so believable is he actually learned the language. And, you know, I, I haven't been around fluent Japanese speaking people, but he sounded pretty authentic to me. And, you know, I bought him in this role. You know, he seems like a young, smart kid, has the world ahead of him. He really wants to be an excellent journalist. And he sees, you know, he sees what's going on here in the underworld. In Japan, he meets all these interesting people, this, you know, old detective here. He learns about the underworld, how things are being controlled by these different families um, with the Yakuza and, you know, all these uh, mysterious deaths that are going around the town. And he's trying to, you know, figure out what's going on. And as he digs further and further, he gets himself involved and puts himself and, you know, all his people that he cares about in danger. So you really feel that too, you know, being this American in this foreign country, he doesn't know like who, who likes him or who doesn't, you know, uh, I think they call them gaijins in this, you know, basically white people. So he doesn't know like who he can trust, you know, but he does find a couple people within the series and mainly he finds it in um, Ken Watanabe's character. Uh, going back to Angel Ogort, you know, perfecting his uh, Japanese here. It's crazy. Like, like how well i don't know i'm not an expert or anything but yeah it knocks it out of the park he must have been doing a lot of studying and practicing for this role because he it comes off like a native a person that speaks a native tongue and it adds to the authenticness of this series um and also talking about tokyo in the show that it feels like it's its own character you know like going in the underworld the, the noir look to it the bright you know neon lights and kind of had a, a dirty feel to it it really built this cool atmosphere that was pretty much its own character and seeing, you know, people that never been to Tokyo, this is what it looks like and all the corrupt and, and craziness that goes on like in any big city. But uh, you see it through the eyes of young Jake and as he's writing his stories and getting involved with some really bad people. Pretty awesome that this story was taken from, you know, his actual writing based on his memoirs that he wrote, you know, going over the times that he was a young journalist and this, these things happened to him. So this is very interesting. And he got some, some very smart people involved in this project. And we have Michael Mann helming the pilot episode. So, you know, when Michael Mann's involved, you get some really, you know, deep, uh, you know, crime dramas usually, you know, very focused on character and, you know, specific camera work. You notice his, uh, you know, the camera tricks that he uses in all his films, what he likes to film in this. There's some classic Michael Mann shots throughout this pilot episode. Uh, but, you know, not going past the pilot, it, you know, it doesn't always feel like the same show, like every episode's kind of, you know, as he's going further and further um, into the crimes that are happening and becoming involved with these people and, you know, getting drunk and, you know, finding this other girl who's American in this foreign land and like forming a bond between her. But at the same time, you know, she's really in love with this uh, young guy who's a young Yakuza member. And also, it's awesome that this show even makes you sympathize with somebody like that, a Yakuza member, this young guy who we learn about his childhood, you know, he was kind of just a pushover, you know, getting ran over in life. And, you know, somebody came across him from the Yakuza and saw something in him and it, it worked for him. You know, he's this Yakuza member. They have the tat 
tattoos all over their bodies, the big dragon that covers their whole bodies. It's a classic sign for this gang. But following uh, this uh, young man, um, Sato is his name in the show. Um, very interesting to see him and how he how his uh, loyalty to his family is tested. There's this other guy that always picks on him, who's another Yakuza, and it actually comes back within the you know in the final episode too. So it's this whole kind of interesting character study. You're seeing Jake's point of view, but you're also seeing the point of view of this you know Yakuza member who you sympathize with because his childhood was so rough. And you can tell that he's really trying to, to, you know, he's doing bad crimes and stuff, but you can tell that he's really got a heart and he cares for uh, the character, Samantha played by Rachel Keller. I thought she did a really great job in this, you know, like she really made me believe um, that, uh, you know, she could go toe to toe with these guys. She wasn't going to let them bullshit them. She was tough. You know, she wasn't afraid and she wasn't going to let anybody, you know, get in her way. And she has this whole dream of opening up her own club um, you know, she's very, very business savvy. Uh, you know, she basically works at this bar and, uh, you know, goes and talks to men, basically an escort is what I got. Uh, even though we never really heard officially what she was, that's what I assumed. She's kind of like an escort for rich guys to talk to eye candy, but anyway, she ends up meeting Jake and we get this whole other kind of story going when they meet. And then we see her actual, you know, where she came from and her story, of being, I think uh, she was involved in like Mormonism or something. And she was trying to, she originally went to Japan to try to convert people, but obviously things went a little awkward there and she had some family problems, but we also get into the character Jake's family history too, as well. And you were mentioning Samantha, I thought she was really great in the show. I thought she had a really great chemistry with Sato's character, which is probably one of my favorite characters of the show next to Jake. I thought he was kind of cool. It's just uh, Eric was really interesting and he had some good, uh, good scenes with Jake as well throughout the series throughout the season. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of a love triangle there for a minute with Samantha, Jake and Tato. And I thought that was pretty wild and set up some pretty yeah. uh, great fight scenes as well. But uh, the show has plenty of that. A lot of, a lot of gore, a lot of kill scenes, good fight scenes shot very well. It's a beautiful looking show. That's what really grabbed me on early on just the overall look of this, the way it was filmed. So kudos and cinematography and all that in the show. It really sets up a cool atmosphere. Um, it's a bit of a slow burn, but it, you know, once it gets going, you get really invested in this, you know, this, these characters in the show, a lot of exposition in this, uh, but it's really building up to a really, uh, I guess, satisfying ending to the first season. I liked where it ended too. And it made me wanting more episodes from the show. And I hope we get that. It hasn't been green light yet, but yeah, like, you mentioned japan in general on the show it just feels like an extra character in itself like they did a great job you know i've never seen this side of the world before and i felt uh, you know tokyo vice and how it's filmed um the neon colors like you mentioned it really takes you there you know you can you can imagine being this young man in a different country uh so kudos to that kudos to the writing just i love the character development the exposition like you mentioned is a bit of a slow burn but if you really appreciate good writing, good dialogue, and, you know, admiring actors work in here, that everybody's on their A game. Ansel Elgort, I haven't really seen a better role for him, honestly. Baby Driver, he's good and everything. But this one's one where I can actually, you know, see maybe, you know, a promising young actor coming up. Excellent job all around with this cast. Ken Watanabe's character, like, perfect in the role. I couldn't see anybody else playing this role. Like, him and Jake really worked well off of each other and gave you the sense that, uh, you know, they had a little bit of a father son bonding there. They both trusted each other until the end. Of course, there's some twists and turns along the way, but yeah, this series had me throughout the episodes and uh, left me wanting more all eight episodes on HBO max. I'm glad I binged this. I, mean, I have to agree with you. This is a really fantastic show. Didn't know really anything about it. He told me to check it out. Did Michael Mann, you know, directed the first episode, huge fan of his really set up a, a really crime stricken and beautiful atmosphere in Tokyo. Never been there, uh, but definitely interests me now after watching the show. It looks really cool, especially in the end lights and things like that. Definitely grab my attention. Really great characters in this. Um, Jake Adelstein, definitely really top-notch performance. The Anza Elgort, not a huge fan of his. Only seen Baby Driver and The Fault in Our Stars from like 10 years ago. So yeah, I thought- you've seen that more than once. <laughs> well, I had to review it, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll do another season of this. I kind of set it up that way. Um, that things aren't over yet. Um, but other great, you know, supporting cast in this as well and uh, really grabbed me, never let me go. 
bit of a slow burn, but the payoff is really fantastic in this and uh, it really gets down and dirty and a lot of action towards the end. So that being said, I'll give the first season of Tokyo Vice a four out of five Angel Elgort hair pieces. I completely agree with you, Uncle Steve. And I am going to give Tokyo Vice season one a four out of five Sato hair pieces. So we're interested in hearing your guys' thoughts on the first season of Tokyo Vice. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to click subscribe. Also check out these wild Tokyo enthusiasts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, our website, cinefellas.com for the latest, greatest TV movie news and reviews. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We had a great time watching this HBO Max series, Tokyo Vice. Very well done. A very uh, good binge for you guys to check out if you haven't and you need something to watch in the summer season here at night, you know, after the sun goes down, cuddle by the fire and watch Tokyo Vice and get sucked in to the Tokyo underworld. <laughs> so until the next Cinefellas TV review, I'm Uncle Henry Hill. That's my good mate. Logan Elgort. Cheese. <laughs>